Yeah, I'm gonna do a run on this and then I'll I'll switch to console. I mean, I like playing DFO, but it's just the way it is now. It's like such a chore. Especially once you get to the the speedboat special dungeon, like the it's recommended, like the the optimal leveling curve there or, or procedure is to like grind that level like dozens and dozens of times <laughs> to level up because the experience there is still exponentially better than doing the quest because of how bad the curve is right now. So I, I saw that event and they're like, oh, you can level up to level 73 and get all these nice bonuses and I'm like I really don't want to do speed boats like 200 times I think that's like Chinese water torture <laughs> so I decided I'm not even gonna bother doing that I'll just wait for the patch when the leveling curve is gonna be so much better it had to be like a masochist to have like a lot of level 85s on that game because that is the fastest way to do it. It's just like mind numbing. <laughs> I look at people that have like 12 level 85s on that game and I'm like, man, how many times did you run speedboats? Like a thousand? <laughs> It wouldn't be so bad if it if it didn't have that auto scroller mini game at the at the beginning. That's what makes it really boring to go through is you have like over a minute of just an auto scroller. And if you fail it, then there's no point in continuing because you don't get the experience bonus. Why is this taking so long to load? Is my hard drive dying again? That's what people do in that game and I just I just can't be bothered to do it. It's so dreadfully boring. I can barely stand auto scrollers as it is, but like having that be the optimal leveling procedure is just like too much. The problem with the new leveling experience is that they made it too easy. It's kind of like pick your poison on that game. It's like, you know, do the special dungeons like dozens of times or just have, uh, you know, the leveling be completely devoid of challenge. But at least it's easier to not, uh, not reach a wall in progress. I don't know, there's lots of things in that game. I, I look at the characters people have and I wonder like how much money they spent. <laughs> like a pretty decent amount of the decent chunk of the end game in that is like RNG and how much money you can spend to get something. I like just the the experience of leveling up it will be a lot more fun once they fix it. But uh, just the way the game is designed makes me not really care too much about the end game.
DFO. Closers was the same way. I played that when that came out. Closers was like a pretty uh, standard generic Korean grind. <laughs> now the game's in a pretty nice spot, aside from the fact that my computer doesn't like it. I don't get why people care so much about how much a movie makes. It's like, yeah, the people who made it are like filthy rich. Like, why does that? Why does that matter to anybody? I thought it was a pretty good movie. I didn't really have a lot of hype for it. I just went to see it because I needed to get out of the house. <laughs> I'm not like a, a huge Star Wars fan. I thought it was pretty good. You could tell that they were obviously like setting up for the next one. Uh, I thought it was an alright movie. And I've just never been like super crazy about movies. Movies aren't like a big part of the media that I consume. I don't know how people like wait in line to go watch a movie. I mean I could do that for like a game console or something. I'm so glad they made the Plasma Blender better on bosses. 
definitely a much more balanced weapon now because having the short range really puts you at a disadvantage later on in the game. But now it's got a pretty good trade-off going for it. Like you, you trade your crowd control and your range for having, uh, you know, ridiculous DPS on bosses. Pretty good change. It's not that it wasn't bad on bosses, it was just that other stuff was better. They nerfed the slot machines in this patch, which sucks because the slot machines are really fun. They, uh, they took out the chance for it to spawn three passive items, so it's still good, it's just like you can't get really crazy uh, luck anymore. I had that one daily where it gave me like ten passives, that was pretty awesome. I had like four ninja sashes. My speed must have been like ridiculous. Is there an item down there? Yeah, there is. Ah, I'm not gonna take that. Keep this. What's with all the weapon drops? You can use like an actual item.
Damn, Plasma Blender did more than his weakness. That's crazy. Really good items for Plasma Blender would be anything that increases your damage. So Glass Cannon, uh, Excalibur, the Bronze Barrel, those are all items you really want to look for when you have Plasma Blender because your DPS on bosses is going to be even crazier. And you don't need that many either. Like right now I'm doing like 32 damage with a basic attack. Which for how fast it happens. How fast it uh, hits is really good. There we go. Now I have even more. I don't think there's many people that play this like me because whenever I actually do my daily, like, sometimes the people are like minutes behind my time, which is really odd. It's too bad the game doesn't have replays. I would like to see how more people played this. I just kind of play it like a Mega Man speedrun because that's what I treat it like. But I know a lot of the other people that are on the leaderboards, they play, you know, really slow and they fight everything and they don't skip anything. But me, I skip whenever I can. That's the fun of the game for me is like kind of like improvising a route because I don't know what's going to come next. Like I, I can see the level chunk in front of me and the one in, in like right next to it, but everything else I can't see. So it's kind of fun to improvise, like save my air dash and try to find a place to land so that I can start jumping again. That's what's cool about this game is the the movement and stuff like that. Right now the items are all they're all pretty positive. I, I'd say the only one that's really trash is the, the axe. The axe is terrible. Especially now that the plasma blender got, uh, got buffed. I, I don't see any reason to take the axe. Glaive's really good too, like uh, if you're doing level skipping, you can use a charged charge slash with that to take out anything near you and make your landing safe. I played with the axe like once and I'm like, it, it kills all your momentum whenever you use it, so if something's in front of you that you need to fight, you're gonna drop like a rock, which, at least for the way I play, is like incredibly <laughs> detrimental. Does not work well at all. <laughs> But I, I think the next patch is going to be the item patch, they said. I think it's going to be new items and uh, revamps, which is pretty good. I would honestly prefer new items. I think the items are pretty good the way they are now. But having some items in the pool that are actually useful and not trash, I hope they don't turn this game into Isaac where there's just like too many items and like 80% of them are garbage. I like right now, like most of the time, taking an item is always beneficial. Sometimes you get something you don't want, but most of them have like an actual use, which I find to be better. That's why I like playing this game. Getting an item isn't always, you know, am I going to get trashed? The only time I feel like that in this game is when I get tank and uh, the axe. Those are like the only two items that I, I never ever take. The only time I've ever taken tank is when I did that really long um, endless run where I got to like level 90 or something and my speed was so high that I could like barely control my character. That was the only time that I ever took that item. <laughs> I really need to move my stuff out of, uh, out of Yahoo. I'm getting a lot of spam now. I had someone try to break into my Twitter account last night. I don't know what the... What is the... Why do people try to break into a Twitter account? Do they, like, go on and just, like, post spam links or something? Like, I had a two-factor authentication on my account, so... All it really did was just kind of annoyed me. I kind of went on and I changed the... I changed the password. 
I think Yahoo's uh, security is garbage. That's why I'm trying to like abandon my Yahoo account. I'm just gonna move everything over to Gmail. Because if someone tries to mess with me like that, they're gonna have to get through the two-factor authentication on Gmail, and then they'll have to get through it on the actual site. So <laughs> the most they can do is know the password, which I can always change, but they can't actually get in and do anything. I have like tens of thousands of unread emails on my Yahoo account because I've had it for like 15 years. <laughs> yeah, like all of these items are all really useful. I wish you could get the double jump more than once. You can't get more than one double jump anymore. You can get unlimited uh, plumber's hats so you can have like a really high normal jump but you can't like you can't get triple or quadruple jumps anymore. Which sucks. That was really fun. Alright. Uh, I think I'm going to switch over. Well, you can still get crazy amounts of momentum, it's just you don't have you don't have extra jumps anymore to recover. Like if you're doing one of those crazy leaps of faith that I do, like sometimes you'll notice that I, I save my double jump or my air dash until the very end because you know, sometimes I, I might fall into a pit or something and I might need to like damage boost to land on solid ground so that I don't lose all my progress. That's what the jumps are useful for but if you have a ton of speed upgrades and plumber's hatch you can still go really far with just two jumps like in that last run I skipped like pretty much the entire level <laughs> I only landed on the ground like three times the double jump is nice but if you don't have any speed items uh, you're not gonna have that much momentum which means that you're not gonna be able to skip that much Having the air dash is nice too, it gives you a little extra momentum, but it's also great for repositioning yourself. If you land past the platform and you can't get on it, like you can air dash air dash back and you know you can start skipping again. Really cool uh advanced tech in this game that a lot of people don't seem to grasp, but I think they just play it because it's a Mega Man roguelike, but I like the, the movement in this. It's really fun. I think they could do with making the base speed a little higher so that the first two levels aren't so slow paced but uh, once you get at least one speed item and the double jump the game really opens up and that's when it's really fun for me. I get kind of bored just fighting everything it's never really been my style I like being able to just skip over things and right now the game's got a pretty good balance between uh, it's got a pretty good balance between being able to skip everything and then having situations where you have to fight but you can still go fast like uh, Agni Sword especially. Agni Sword is always closed off like you can't really do big skips in Agni Sword. The most you can do is you can skip like long long sections like if there's like a long room and you have mobility you can skip past it but you can't you can't do large skips in there because of how closed off everything is but if you do like Sky Temple, Frost Door, and uh, Vacuolab, like the other three quarters of the game, he can do pretty large skips because they're all really open. That's why I usually do Frost Door and Vacuolab last because they're always open. By that time, I have pretty good mobility. And at that point, it's just uh, having enough health to get through the boss. Late game Frost Door is pretty rough because of the uh, the traps in the challenge rooms and the boss rooms. I think they really need to take those out. They really don't feel like uh, actual difficulty at all. They feel pretty artificial. Like, you straight up can't dodge those attacks unless you have a bunch of uh, this item here. These are really good in the late game. In the early game, they're pretty useless. 
Well, I don't really seem to have any viewer requests, so... I'm not sure what to do right now. I guess I could switch to console. Um, people don't really seem too interested, which is kind of what I was worried about. Alright, I'm gonna set up my capture card and I'll, I'll play for a little while and then I think I'm just gonna stop. You know, people don't really seem to be too interested. I think uh, trying to do a long stream when people don't really care is not really gonna benefit anybody. <laughs> Can always uh, do more tomorrow, I guess. Alright, let me get set up here. The sound's garbled right now, it'll fix itself. It takes a little while. Yeah, this remake's awesome. I just wish it wasn't $80. If it was like a more normal price, I would have like already paid for it. Yeah, it's 80 bucks.
How's it been so far? I mean, it's been... I don't know, are you asking in terms of, like, donations? I haven't gotten a, a donation. But, uh, it's been fun. I did some suffering on DFO, and I did, uh... I did a run on 20XX, and now I'm playing console stuff. But uh, I'm not really shooting to have things go super well. I mean, what happens, happens. And I'm doing this for at least a couple days, so it's whatever. I know people are uh, probably a little burnt out on Twitch because of AGDQ. At least for like the stuff that I watch, like the, the couple days after a GDQ event, there's not many people streaming. Lots of people are kind of like, uh, burnt out on Twitch. At least for a couple days and then things go back to normal. I don't know, I didn't really watch that much of GDQ. They had a lot of stuff I just, like, plain wasn't interested in watching. They had some really good runs, but just a lot of stuff that I've seen before, so I didn't really feel like devoting a bunch of time to it. I hear people hated that Bloodborne run. I really don't know why they had that in there. I mean, isn't, the, like, the whole point of running one of those Souls games is to, like, see somebody be really good at it, like... I feel like the concept of just clipping out of bounds and, and mashing buttons on the bosses who don't move, like, doesn't really <laughs> benefit every, anybody, aside from seeing the fastest the game can be completed. I watched a little bit of it and I'm like, well, this is pretty boring. The load screens didn't help either. Yeah, the Step Mania, the Mario Maker, and stuff like that. I'm like, that's that's not what I watch a, a GDQ for. I need to watch the the Ratchet and Clank run.
They really outdid themselves with this remake. I mean, the original game was like nothing special at all. The gameplay was honestly pretty terrible, even for the year that it came out in. They like went above and beyond, made a really good game. I played the original game for like half an hour and thought it was pretty dreadful. Even back then. I mean, I've played this demo like 20 times, so they definitely did something. I could tell that their next game was going to be really good though because the uh, the DLC characters in Muramasa Rebirth were all so much more interesting to play than the ones that came with the base game in terms of uh, how they were designed, you know, all the abilities that they had and how unique they all were. You could tell that they were really trying to improve in that uh, department and you can see that the uh, experience they got from doing that DLC uh, really refre reflects in the quality of the characters in this game. The DLC for that game was like some of the best I've ever played. It wasn't like the longest one out there, but in terms of like actual content, there was a pretty good amount for like five bucks. My only complaint with it was like the, the second endings were like a grind to get and I hear that they were all like really morbid and depressing so I kind of lost interest in getting them. <laughs> like the first ending that you get for just playing through which takes like an hour is like more positive but then the second endings that you have to grind for are like super negative and depressing. Yeah, that's uh that's the Muramasa Rebirth DLC like like there's two endings. There's the one you get for just playing through the new content, which is pretty much just go from point A to point B and you fight the three new bosses. That that's like the ending that you just get for just playing the game pretty much. And that one's like pretty positive. And then the second one is like really depressing. Like, if it had been the other way around, like, I would have been more, uh, more motivated to get them, but then I heard that, and I'm like, ah, I'm good. I should play that on stream someday. Maybe I'll do that for the marathon tomorrow or something. Damn it. 
dropping my combos. What I don't understand is, you see, you can see all the commands here on the side and they're grayed out. Like you can do fighting game commands to have shortcuts, but I don't really know what the what the benefit is. I don't know if it's something like DFO or I know in DFO, like if you do a manual command, it gives you like an MP and cooldown reduction. But in this, I don't really know what the benefit is. I've kind of just been doing the fighting game inputs because I like doing them. But I don't know if there's like any actual material bonus for doing it at all. That's kind of one of the things that uh, is holding me back from importing this, aside from the price. I don't know if any of this stuff is going to be explained or translated at all. And in 80 bucks, it's like a pretty high risk. That's probably what I'm going to do. I mean, if by some miracle the marathon goes well and I'm able to pay off the PS4 like almost in full, then maybe I'll do it. But if the marathon doesn't go well and I have to pay over half of it by myself, then I'm just going to skip it. I don't have enough money this month to be doing both. I can do one or the other, not both. And I mean, if I wanted to play this, I mean, I'm playing it on PS3 right now, and I don't really see any major reason to uh, get it on PS4. As far as I know, this runs in 1080p, 60fps on PS3, just like Dragon's Crown did, so... <laughs> it's not the kind of game you really need to upgrade consoles for, which is nice. I hope there's not too many of these bosses in the game. I really like the combo system, but you can't do anything fun to these guys. Just kind of stand there and tank it. If you want to see some crazy attention to detail, look at the mini-map in the upper right-hand corner. 
Every object has its own unique uh, silhouette. Pretty crazy. I didn't notice that until I played it a couple times. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, dude. Uh, if you have something you want to see, you can let me know. But uh, I'm gonna stop pretty soon. It's been about uh, been about two hours. That's pretty much what I committed to doing every day. I'm gonna do at least at least one to two hours. I think that's a that's a pretty good amount. I don't know, I'm not really into doing the crazy like 15 hour streams and stuff like that. <laughs> I could do it, but uh... I could do it, but I don't really garner the viewership to really warrant torturing myself like that. <laughs> it seems like a good idea on paper, but I think you need a pretty, pretty dedicated uh, viewer base to really warrant doing that. I'm pretty good with like two to three hour streams. That's a pretty good sweet spot. After that, it's like pushing it. I start to get irritable or frustrated or hungry or all three. <laughs> it's not, uh, not pleasant for people to watch at that point. Why would it take two dollars every transaction? That's pretty shady. Is that like some weird thing that your bank is doing or what? I mean, I have a I have a debit card, and uh, it doesn't take anything. I'm not exactly uh, rich myself; otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this. Yeah, you don't really want to watch me play Guilty Gear. I'm not really how I used to be on fighting games anymore. I haven't really had the motivation to uh, play them anymore. The fighting game community here is pretty much like Capcom only. They play Marvel and Street Fighter. And uh, we had a gaming lounge to play at for a while. But uh, they closed last year. So as far as I know, they like they hosted at each other's houses, and I would have to ask a ride to do that. And uh, I don't really feel open to doing something like that when I know all they're gonna play is games that I don't play. <laughs> so I kind of just like unwillingly dropped fighting games. I wish that wasn't the case, but I mean, even if it wasn't, Street Fighter V is coming out in about a month, and everybody's gonna be playing that. So, I haven't really had any motivation. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is one of the hardest PS2 games that no one talks about. I mean, you hear about like Shinobi and Devil May Cry 3 and stuff like that, but this game is really difficult, especially with the ranking system. Like, towards the end of the game, you need as many abilities as you can get, or upgrades that you can get, because the, the spike is pretty crazy in the second half. So, it's pretty much imperative in the first half of the game that you S-rank as many missions as possible. Because if you get to the later levels and you don't have any upgrades, it's going to be really difficult. But in general, this game's kind of an underappreciated game. cheap shot. I don't know why he didn't explode right away. How much health does he have? My god. It's getting unmanageable. I'm gonna have to reset this anyway. Took too much damage.
Alright, I think that's a good stopping point. I've been on for about two hours. I think I'm gonna go grab a snack. Chill a bit. Uh, I'll send you guys somewhere else. Uh, tomorrow, probably at the same time, I'll be back on... I'll be back on, um, if not more today. Pro there probably will be more today because there's... <laughs> I don't have much to do. I mean, I already grabbed all my groceries and everything, so... I, maybe I can, uh... I'll come back on. I'll play some more. Probably, uh, Basara or some of the other stuff I haven't really touched in a while. Good hints for a donation incentive. Uh, if you want to make me suffer, is to make me play Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2. <laughs> uh, I bought that so that I could do style videos with the Tonfas, but it's been uh, so hard for me to get there. The game's just not designed the way I like it. But, uh, I'll probably come back and I'll do some of that later on. Alright. See, this is what I mean here. You really need to get S ranks as much as possible in the first uh, the first half of the game. Once you get to the second half, everything starts to cost so much that you can't really get it until New Game Plus, so it's better to have uh, as close to a perfect run as you can in the first half, and in the second half you can uh, you can kind of slack off a little bit, not worry too much about your performance. Yeah, uh, I think I'm going to take a break and grab a snack, uh, see if anyone else is on, and uh, I'll come back later tonight. So, I'm going to be doing this for at least a week, maybe longer. Uh, we'll have to see how things go. Right now, I'm like nowhere near getting it, so I've got to commit to at least another couple days. It's just uh, the main issue is uh, I'm going to be playing a lot of DFO on the 19th when they add that patch. And uh, I know, historically, whenever I stream that game, people aren't really interested in watching. So, for this next week, I want to really uh, put as much into the marathon that I can and see how things go from there. And uh, at that point, I can decide if I want to continue or if I'm just going to pay the rest out of my pocket or wait until next month or something. I will have um, YouTube money coming in for sure next month, so that'll help a little bit. Anyway, uh, you can stick around. I'm going to see if uh, anybody else is on. You guys can head over there. and um, I'm going to go grab a snack, come back, and do some more. All right, we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go watch Omega. I think he's doing some grinding on Xenoblade Chronicles. Um, he's helped me a lot, a lot in the past. Uh, we've helped each other out a lot in the past. He's one of my oldest friends on YouTube. So you can go check him out. Uh, he said that he's gonna come by the marathon later, but people are uh, kind of already leaving. So I think I'm gonna take the opportunity to take a break. Uh, probably when he's done, uh, I'll come back on. We'll. Uh, I don't know what we'll do. Um, Probably some Basara. Things I had in mind for doing is uh, maybe suffering through this game. <laughs> I'm like uh, I'm like halfway towards the Tadfas, and that's when the game will get more fun. Uh, I definitely had that in mind for the marathon. Uh, Basara, of course, is a staple. Uh, Gradius Five, maybe. I might finish my Plague Knight playthrough on Shovel Knight, but I don't know how many people are interested in watching that, so... Probably some Rayman Legends as well. I bought this game on PC, but... I don't know, you play such a garbage client. I don't even remember the password to my account, so I bought it on here. That'll be something I'll probably uh, mess around with too. So lots of varied content. I will be back um, probably in a couple hours. Peace.